um, when they do the assessment, do they look just at how the child functions, or do they also look at the parent's ability to support the child? Prior to September 1st, they only looked at the child. The new assessment tool actually has a question uh, about families. It's, and this, you have to be real honest with this too. Um, uh, this question, is there evidence that the primary caregiver has a declining or chronic condition or is facing other unforeseen circumstances that will limit his or her ability to care for that individual? That's gonna be, you know, like, I, I've got a nervous disorder, you know, and the fact that my kid has a disability is causing some issues, I mean, or, you know, just having a kid with a disability causes some issues. So you gotta talk about the family dynamic as well. Yes, ma'am. What kind of documentation would you need for? It depends on your county, but you may need a physician's. Yeah, I'm getting some head shakes. It always helps to have a physician or a psychologist in the background. I don't think a note from your priest is gonna help, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I, I'm not being facetious, that, you know, for me, with my faith, that would be, you know, I'd go. You know, go to the rabbi and, you know, uh, but it depends on your county. They did the guidelines and you're gonna have the guidelines here as to what kind of documentation they want. For me, the example is if, you know, I'm in my 60s, if, if I had a son with cerebral palsy and I couldn't lift him anymore, that would be kind of obvious. Uh, yeah, so many, you know, the biggest question people, or the biggest worry most families have is what happens when I'm gone? and I want to prepare before I'm gone. Uh, most counties do that interaction. Does your loved one go to a day program? No. See, that would get them ahead faster if they were in a day program of some sort. Again, that's, I don't want to put, but it does. If the county's paying 100% of the cost of the day program and they can refinance you to Sometimes, and I know this county really especially tries a lot of different things because the waiver comes from the state and the county has to justify things to the state. Um, and sometimes the state will, he seems to be doing just fine. I mean, the old law says that an emergency was uh, something has to be done in the next 30 days. Well, you survive to the 31st day, you just proved you're not an emergency anymore. You know, it, it, it becomes really challenging. Uh, but also your legal obligation once your child turns 18, the, the state and the feds understand legal, legal obligations. They don't necessarily understand a moral obligation. She said, uh, what about families that have language barriers, barriers or cultural differences and they don't understand what might even be available? That's a hard one. Um, the hard reality is this is part of the welfare system. And there's never going to be a big billboard on Euclid Avenues coming in saying, come in and apply for welfare. I mean, that's one of the realities. We are the worthy poor, but Medicaid is part of the welfare system. SSI is not Social Security. Supplemental Security income is part of the welfare system. Uh, and that's one of the realities. So organizing families and helping each other through the process is, I think, the only way we're going to do it. My grandfather, who was a parent in the 1930s, always said, I never knew I was poor till someone knocked on the door and told me. No one's knocking on the door anymore to tell us. You know, it's, it's a different society right now. Um, uh, we did, and, and the story I told Amy probably heard this over the weekend. I do uh, training on how to talk to your legislators. And I was speaking to a group much like this in the Children's Hospital at Columbus explaining how to talk to your legislator and how to find your legislator. And I was, the young couple, much like you were, like feverishly listening, and, and I said, okay, where do you live? And they lived in a place called Hilliard, Ohio. That's where I live. Well, what's your street? They lived on my street. I found out they live across the street from me and have a little boy with autism. I had no idea. We're not connected anymore to our families, you know? They've be, since become good friends, and my wife, who is a special ed teacher, and I help them a lot, but we're gonna have to reorganize as families and do this as often as possible and learn from each other uh, because no one's putting up a billboard. Yes? 
if the if the family has more than one child with a disability and they both have needs, does that raise their chances of getting a waiver? I think we would look at the current needs in the home and figure out what the parents are able to do and other supports they may have around to help with the child or multiple children and make a determination um, based on the current needs of, of how we can support. Right. Now, there, there's a term in our DD system called natural supports. That's the group you have around with you, whether they're related family or friends, that help you out. But the key to the definition of natural supports is it's voluntary. Uh, that's very challenging for us as family members to say, I'm not volunteering to do this anymore. My kid's over 18 and I'm not doing it. The assumption is if you're doing it, you're volunteering to do it. You know, you got to stick to your guns on, uh, nah, he's living in my house and he's paying room and board because he's getting an SSI check and he's paying room and board and I can't do it. And I'm going to save the system money by allowing him to continue to live with me as an adult, but I'm not volunteering. I'm his dad. I'll be the dad, but he's 25 and I'm not giving him a shower anymore. You know? It, it's hard, but you've got to stick to your guns and say what you need. And I also tell parents, put blinders on. Any of you that have gone through the special ed system, there is always going to be someone telling you, if we do it for your kid, we're not going to be able to do it for these kids. Put blinders on. This is about your kid. Do what you got to do for your kid. It's not about anyone else's. That's my job. I represent everyone. Dave represents everyone. You do what you got to do for your child. Uh, don't be mean about it. It's like you get more with lemonade and cookies than you're going to get with other things. But do what you got to do. And know the power players. Go to the county boards. Find out who you, I always say. Find out what church, mosque, or synagogue your superintendent goes to. And see them. And by noon, you too might have a waiver. Kelly's not like that here. So, but, you know, you get to know the players. This is politics. You know, the county board answers to the county commissioners and the probate judge. Get to know them. That goes back to telling them what your needs are, right? You've got to have those conversations. They're not going to know that. Or if you keep hammering at them saying, hey, this is, we've got to do something. My son or daughter, my loved one needs this. These are the needs. Yes. Who are we having the conversation with? I mean, I, we're we're like 19 years old, but and and I'm thinking that it's going to get a waiver, and now I hear about you know the new waiver um, fix the list, yeah. and now it sounds like you know who am I? I know they're going to assess me, but at this point, who who am I telling what my needs are? So you could the thing you could do at 19 is graduate him, and say he has he has a need for adult services. And then it's up to the county board to determine whether they're going to pay 100% of the cost of adult services or put them on a waiver and save the county 60 cents on the dollar. And then if that doesn't work, go to your county commissioners and your probate judge. I mean, I, it, it just... No, I haven't. You I talk to an SSA. You, talk you, it all begins with a caseworker. Okay, so it used to be prior to September 1, you'd call the county board and said, I want a waiver, put me on the list. Well, so now you call the county board and say, I've got a 19-year-old son who's leaving school and needs adult services. That's a different question. It's not, I need a waiver anymore. Those questions don't work. It's, I need a specific thing. And not therapy, but I need, yes, go ahead. If people still do call and ask for a waiver, yeah. we will complete the assessment yeah. with them and try to make a determination of if there's a current or immediate need. Okay. But our our way to assist may be to offer various options in order to help them meet their needs, right. which would include could include local funding, family support funding, connecting them to other community resources to help meet their needs. But remember, that's Cuyahoga, so you might. You know. So the other thing is, depending on your son's functioning level, if he needs adult services, what they might say is you need to call the Bureau of Vocational Rehabilitation, who gets people's jobs. The Department of DD and the county boards are only just one door we can knock on. Uh, so it, well, that's okay. 
he did then tell them to give him a for, formal denial letter. And that's, that creaks the door open a little bit for the county board. So if you've gone to that door and they've said no, get it in writing and then go to the other door and say, hey, they said no, don't send me back there again. What can you do for me? I, my son needs this. So I have a child who's 17, will be 18 in May, socially graduate, but will stay under the school system until okay. the age of 22. So can do several things independently, has cerebral palsy, autism, mm -hmm. not, for security and safety reasons, can never be home alone. Um, am I, so, so at some point he's going to want to move out. Mm -hmm. um, so is that a Medicaid or is that a, I'm signing, a to, I'm signing away from Medicaid for the, for the IO waiver? Because you said Medicaid okay. is the intermediate 24-7. No, no, oh, okay. That's a, <laughs> Medicaid your health insurance program. That like could pay for the, the well. That that's part of what Medicaid can pay for. For your child, that's probably not the option that you want. Um, the governor signed an executive order regarding <coughs> technology first. So, what the county may do, because Cuyahoga does. Are you in Cuyahoga? No, I'm Portage. Portage may do this. They're pretty progressive as well. Um, technology may give him the ability to stay at home. And Portage County, like Cuyahoga, may be willing to use local levy dollars while he's still in school. Like if you wanted to go grocery shopping, there are now cameras that could monitor him that you could see on your phone what he's doing at home. And Portage County Board may be willing to purchase that for him versus give him a waiver and staff time. In fact, most young adults are saying, I'd rather have technology than an 18 year old sitting on my couch playing with their iPhone instead of interacting with me. You know, so. It, it could be something called remote supports, which actually somebody monitors an individual. And it also could just be technology that's purchased under either local funds or waiver funds that enables them to have that freedom in the community. So it used to be that families would, we talk about all the different waivers. And then families would get in a line for a specific waiver. The new way is you're expressing your need through this assessment, and the county board's <coughs> obligation is to, to fill that need either with local dollars or one of the waivers. So if I have a need that can be met with about less than $5,300 a year, chances are I'm going to get a level one waiver. If I've got a child with really, really intense needs, that you know is lying on the floor, can't do anything themselves, I'll probably get a higher funding waiver. It's, that assessment is gonna determine whether they use local funds or whether they use one of the waivers. Yes? Kind of to pick up on what she said a little bit, at some point her son is gonna to wanna to move out and be independent. Right. Yes. We were kind, of, were kind of at that same point. However, we did just go through this waiver assessment uh -huh. and they found that he was doing fine just living with me. It, it, that, it goes back to that challenge. conversation that we had. Do if we you don't say, say he's not living with me, then he's living with you and his needs are met. I know it's, that's really hard. Well, it would be any different from any of our parents. When we got to a certain age, you're not living with me anymore. I, I mean, that's what it is. You're not kicking them out. It's doing exactly what our parents would have done. Uh, we'll work it out. I want you to stay here and you're paying me rent. If you're not willing to do that. I mean, I, I know it's not, a, it's not a nice answer, but if we do it, we're doing it. Right. This is based on need. This is part of the welfare system. It, it, it's one of those, that tough love kind of stuff but it's not kicking out. I wouldn't suggest anyone drop anyone off at the county board door. Because if you do that, then their obligation is to find a place without you. You know, we've had parents so upset, they've taken their kids to children's services. And then children's services does what children's services does. The, the, I've never known a county that hasn't come to the rescue of someone whose parents have passed on but they find a placement where they can find a placement. You know, it's always in the state of Ohio, they're not gonna ship them to Oregon, but 
it, whatever we do, the county doesn't do. Yeah, Amy. So I how? I just have a suggestion. Being a mom of a young adult, and I'm thinking about having a child, and I'm thinking Sometimes when I'm talking with families about this very thing, very similar questions, it's really hard for us to not look at it as though we're kicking them out. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we're trained that way. We, we always want to do the best we can for our kids. We'll always be there, no matter what. How many times have we said that? Mm -hmm. I'll always be there for him. So, what I try to do is help you to understand that you have a choice. It is a choice. You can keep him with you in your home or work with a team to plan for a move out. So, hello County Board, please do an assessment. Well, what are your needs? I need to plan help planning him to move out and live independently or on his own. Mm -hmm. That is your need. So it's not kicking out, but it feels that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it feels like the other side of our <coughs> home, of our wonderful home walls, is dark, right? It's dark and scary place. But that's what I, I try to tell families is to think about it that way. One of your needs when you approach the county board for a needs assessment is he needs to live apart from me. Right. He needs that. For social emotional reasons, he needs that. Oh, and the reality is our loved ones are going to outlive us. Right. I mean, that's, that's not a reality the, the last generation even had to think about. Yes, sir. Um, being in the same situation, I guess, as her at the moment, is this a trial and error process in the sense that the county agrees, okay, we're gonna move your child out and here's where they're going. You maybe do a visit or however that happens and your child moves in and after a month or two, you know, this really isn't working because. Do they get then an option to try someplace else or come back home for a little while <coughs> until you can find a place that might work better or how does that work? If this were 10 years ago, I would say yes, they would do that. Now, because waivers aren't a place, you have to have the funding. Be so even 10 to 20 years ago, placement stopped being institutions and started being group homes. Those group homes are still gonna exist, but for the most part, they're full. So this is not, it depends on where I'm at. It might be families getting together to say, and I say this over and over, people with disabilities don't have to live with people with disabilities. You know, so the future could be, uh, especially if you're in a college town, setting up an apartment and having two college kids move in as tenants to help. It's this really scary stuff. Uh, the concept of facility-based residential services is not what it once was. Uh, because there are so many people out there and SSI is not enough to pay typical rent anywhere outside the family home. So we're trying to be creative at this point. Um, the intermediate care facilities are an option. If that's what you want to choose, there are facilities that you can do a trial visit with. Um, but I don't know how often SSAs anymore are helping do that. Do you, is that something that... If a person has, is looking for a supported living type of setting to live in, and they need those types of 24 hour supports and they have the funding, then we will assist them with finding an appropriate place to live and a provider who can provide those services. And if things don't work out in that setting for them, then we can look at finding another place for them to move to with the team and with planning. Right. If the person doesn't have the waiver funding to provide that level of support, then they still want to live 
in the community out of their parents' home, then we will work with them to try to determine what type of income they have, do they have a job, do they have uh, house space they can move into, people they can move in with, get some you know, drop-in supports perhaps, and what they need to be able to live independently on their own. So in Cuyahoga, I guess you could do both. It just depends on the resources. If you lived in Tuscarawas County, there just aren't a lot of places to go to. But also remember, waivers are mobile. So if, if your son got a waiver in Cuyahoga, but there was a placement that he liked in Lorraine or even in Cincinnati, his waiver would go with him. But if you decided to move to Florida, the waiver doesn't go to Florida with him. He would have to start all over again. Um, and that's another challenge we have. Our waivers stay in the state of Ohio. So you can get it in one county and move to another, but if you move to Erie County in Pennsylvania, you got to start all over again. Um, they don't move outside the state because it's a deal between Ohio and the federal government. And each state has their own different kind of waivers.